Right, today we're going to take a little bit of a back to basics look at a single transistor amplifier and look at the DC operating point of that transistor in the amplifier or its quiescent point and how that determines the class of operation. The DC operating point is really the bias conditions for the transistor. What the bias voltages are at the three terminals and what the current is flowing through them. And uh, there are really three basic regions of operation that are associated with bipolar transistors. The cutoff region is when the transistor is off. It doesn't have sufficient bias to turn on. No current is flowing. The active region is where it's typically used as an amplifier or other types of circuits like that. The saturation region is when it's turned on really hard and is typically used as a switch. Okay, we'll take a look at each of those things. And in order to do so, I've got this simple circuit set up on the breadboard. Uh, an NPN transistor, equal resistors in the collector and emitter just to make life easy for what we're looking at, and a variable DC voltage supply that I can use to vary the base voltage. So uh, I've got this thing started out here with um, the base essentially sitting at zero volts. So that'll be our cutoff region. So I've got two meters here. This meter is reading the base voltage. This meter is reading the collector voltage. So I can see the collector voltage is sitting at the supply. Uh, so what that means is that the, the voltage here is equal to the voltage here, which means there's no current flowing through that resistor. So this transistor is off. That's the cutoff region. As I vary the bias voltage on the base, I'll do that with a power supply right here. As I start turning that up, I see the base voltage coming up. So at you know, about a, a quarter of a volt here or so, I still don't see any movement in the collector. So even though I have a little bit of bias on the base, uh, not enough to turn the transistor on at all yet. If I keep going up, I'll start to see that move. I get up you know, near you know, 600 millivolts or so. Okay. So at about 600 millivolts, I can see that I've dropped just 50 millivolts now on the collector here. So I've got just enough current to drop 50 millivolts across this 680 ohm resistor. I'm just starting to turn that transistor on. That's the beginning of the active region. If I keep turning the voltage on the base up here, I can see the collector voltage coming down as I do that. All right, so just kind of come up here if I bring it up to about uh, two volts or so. Uh, about two volts on the base, I got about 3.6 volts at the collector. All right, so that would be two volts here. So I'd have about, you know, 1.3 volts at the emitter, and then I'm dropping about 1.3 or 1.3 or, or, or so volts across the, you know, this resistor as well, because an equal, basically an equal current flowing in each of those legs. So we can see how I've gotten into the active region. The saturation region is when I keep turning this transistor on harder and harder to the point where the collector voltage drops down and really two things happen. It really kind of comes down and kind of crashes into, if you will, the voltage at the emitter. But really what's happening is that we start turning on the base collector junction. All right, and, and once we do that, you'll see this voltage, instead of keep coming down, it'll start going up along with the base voltage. So if I keep turning that base voltage up, we can see the collector's coming down. And now, as I keep going up and up higher, okay, now I see the, as I, this voltage, is, the base voltage is going up, my collector voltage is going up as well. So I'm in the saturation region here now. I will come back down again, get back into the active region, and go all the way back down to when it's turned off. Now, I like seeing things graphically. I think it makes a bit more sense. So I've got the same things up here on the scope. So on the scope, this lower trace is the base voltage. The upper uh, trace here is the collector voltage. Uh, they're both on the one, a one volt per division scale and I've adjusted the offset so that ground is right here where the base voltage is sitting right now. If I start turning that base voltage up, we'll see that the base voltage is coming up but the collector isn't moving yet. The collector doesn't move until this base voltage gets up above about 600 millivolts or so. Okay, a little more than a half a division. Once that gets up above that, now you start to see the collector voltage come down. So now I'm in the active region here. If I keep going, those voltages will actually pass each other. Boom, right there. And now when I reach a point where that collector is actually down below the base voltage, if I keep driving it down, all right, now I'm going to start to turn on the base collector junction and further increases in the base voltage, now bring them both up. 
all right so that's kind of I'm in saturation region there now so that's kind of using the transistor as a switch we'll come back down and bring that all the way back down here again so that's what we mean when we talk about the operating regions or the quiescent point of the transistor is it cut off is it active or is it in the saturation region so let's see how that relates to the uh, operating point or the excuse me the, the class of operation of an amplifier right, so next we're going to consider uh, how the bias of the amplifier determines the class of operation for that amplifier and you'll often hear for an amplifier running in class A or class B, class C, etc. And there's other classes too, from D up through G and other letters. We're not going to consider those uh, in this uh, simple tutorial. But uh, class A is essentially when the device is on or in the active region during the entire waveform. And this is the most linear, it's very clean, but it also is the least efficient because the, you know, the transistor is on all the time. Okay. So that you have to put a lot more power into the amplifier than you get out of it. But it also gives you the cleanest waveform. Class B is when the active device or the transistor is on for only half the cycle. It's only on for maybe the positive or negative half cycle. Uh, since the transistor is off half the time, it's a lot more efficient, but it also adds a fair amount of distortion to the waveform, which might be able to be filtered out. So taking that to a little bit more of an extreme, you can go to Class C. Class C is when the device is on for less than a half a cycle, all right, less than 180 degrees. So more efficient yet, a lot more distortion, but again, you might be able to filter it out to make it uh, make that amplifier work for you and be a bit more efficient. This is often the way that uh, many single transistor uh, RF amplifiers work because they'll take uh, an operating class C and just filter the output to get rid of all that harmonic distortion. Class AB, as you might imagine, is between A and B, where the transistor is off for part of the time, but not quite a half cycle, something less than a half cycle it's off, and something more than a half cycle it's on. So in order to look at this graphically, we're just going to use that same circuit that I showed earlier. Uh, in this case, the gain is set up for just for minus one, all right, I've got the emitter and collector resistors here are equal, so we're just going to get an inversion here, but it, uh, this particular case is going to kind of show us help us to show the different classes of operation. Uh, I've got a resistor I'm going to select on my board here that's going to determine the bias level uh, on the base which will determine essentially or affect how we're going to you know, set up for class A or class B or whatever operation. The input signal is coming from a signal generator at 2 volts peak to peak being coupled in through this capacitor. So the idea by doing that is that this 2 volt peak to peak signal is just going to swing above and below whatever bias voltage is set up here by these two resistors. So let's go take a look for example how I have this uh, you know, set up on the board. Okay, So I just have a couple a jumper I can go move here and uh, let's go take a look at that um, on the scope. So right now I've got the base uh, essentially tied to ground so that's ground right here. I have this voltage cursor set up just in a convenient spot here, right at about 600 millivolts. So that's the point where above that, if the base goes above that, the transistor starts to conduct, and we'll see that on the collector voltage. Right now the collector voltage is sitting up here at 5 volts because the transistor is cut off. So if I uh, move this jumper wire here, and I move it over to this resistor here, that's a 36K resistor right there. We can see now that the base voltage has jumped from ground up to 600 millivolts. So now if I put my input signal on top of this, whenever the signal goes up positive above that 600 millivolt level, we'll see the collector voltage change. Let me turn my signal generator on. Now I can actually see that happening. So as the signal goes above that 600 millivolt point, the transistor is on and the output is being driven down. And then when it goes down below that, the transistor is in the cutoff region, and we're cut off, and, and the output is sitting flatlined. Uh, so this is essentially class B operation. And in fact, we could take a look at this. I positioned the vertical cursors right at these same points. So right where the signal is crossing 600 millivolts here and here, I turn the vertical cursors on. I can see that, the, that those points line up right where the transistor is starting to conduct. So this is class B operation. So if we uh, 
If we move that bias point up even more, so instead of being at 600 millivolts, move it up to about 1.6 volts, now this negative one or the, the one volt you know, lower half cycle of this waveform will come down just to that bias point. So the transistor will be on all the time. That'll put us in class A mode. So if I change that resistor, in this case this resistor here from 36K, if I change it to 10K, that's going to raise that bias point up to about 1.6 volts. All right, boom, put that in there. And now if we take a look at this, the waveform that we're putting in never goes below that 6 tenths of a volt. The lower half of the waveform just touches it, so the transistor is just about turning off, and then turning on hard, and then just about turning off again. But we can see the output is following that. It's inverting, okay, but it's following that the whole way. The transistor is on all the time. That's class A. Okay. Class C is just taking it the other way. I'm going to simply remove that transistor from the circuit. So now this, the base of this transistor is essentially just being pulled to ground through that 2.7K. And only when the positive half cycle of this waveform brings me above that 600 millivolts and am I going to see a signal. So only when I'm going above that 600 millivolts here do I actually see any kind of a signal at the output. So I'm going to say, what, what use is that? Well, in this case, I, I, the gain of the amplifier is set really low. But if I uh, increase the collector resistor here, and I can do that simply by pulling a jumper out I've got on my board here. Okay, and let's take a look at back, back up on the scope. So even though we're only conducting for this very small portion of the cycle, uh, we can see that uh, I'm getting a large output swing here and the transistor is off most of the time and then I get this large swing. Now many RF amplifiers actually will use this. Even though there's a lot of distortion in that waveform, if you take that waveform and you feed it through like a, a bandpass filter, a tuned filter or a tuned circuit, we can reject all of the harmonic distortion and just be left with the fundamental and basically turn this thing back into a sine wave at a, at a reasonable amplitude. So these types, class C operation is very common for RF amplifiers. It's almost never used for audio because you'd hear all that kind of distortion. Um, but for RF amplifiers, which are typically operating over a narrow frequency range, um, this type of operation is pretty common. So anyway, I hope this uh, short tutorial gave you a little bit better feel for what is meant by different classes of operation and how the bias point on the transistor will affect what operating mode or class the amplifier is operating in. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, comments are always welcome.